All right, hello, grade eights, and welcome to lesson 12.3, calculating probabilities. And it is found on page 408 of your textbook. And the goal, which you are to write down right now, is to use tree diagrams and organize lists to calculate probabilities. All right, so get all this down, put them in your notes. I provide some nice note-taking sheets for you. So write that in, fill it in. All right, here we go. All right, so question is, Karina, Rowan, and Rishi are standing in line for the drop zone ride at Canada's Wonderland. Is the drop zone still there? Anyway, you know more than me. Anyway, so if the ride operator loads them randomly, what is the probability that Rishi will sit between Rowan and Karina? The answer I'm going to tell you in just a few minutes. But before then, we have to go through some, uh, we have to go through some definitions. Favorable outcome. Write that down desired result when calculating a probability. For example, the result that Rishi will sit between Rowan and Karina. Complementary events is two events that have no outcomes in common, but account for all possible outcomes of, of an experiment. The sum of probabilities of complementary events is one. For example, tossing heads and tossing tails are a complementary event. If you're hoping the favorable outcome will be heads, then the complementary event will be tails. If you do it three times, favorable outcome is once probably, two times will be tails, so you got one in three, one favorable, two complementary. Sound good? Ask me in class, we'll go through it a bit more, okay? Don't worry, we will review this. All right, so here we go. Next. Question A, use a tree diagram to show all the possible seating arrangements. This, ladies and gentlemen, is all the possible seating arrangement. This is also a tree diagram. All right, starts with Rishi, goes to Rowan, Keto, and Karina, and all the possible outcomes of who sits where. There's the people, there's the seats, and there is who they can sit beside right here. Okay, and this is everybody in the first seat, in the second seat, third seat, or fourth seat. This is all the possibilities right here, okay? So now when you look at your data, use the tree di diagram to determine all possible outcomes and all favorable outcomes. So, so there are 24 possible outcomes. 24 possible, okay? 24 possible outcomes. All right, you write that down. Okay, but there are only four favorable. Okay, four favorable. All right, get the Canadian spelling right there. Four favorable. Okay, and the question was what is the probability that Rishi will sit between Rowan and Karina? That is your favorable outcome. And of the 24 possible outcomes, four of them were favorable to this question. All right, pause and write that down. All right, next one. Calculate the probability that Rishi will sit between Rowan and Karina. All right, so we had four favorable outcomes, 24 of the possible outcomes. If you work it out, Rishi has a one in six chance of sitting between Rowan and Karina. So this is what you want to do. There is your fraction. This is your lowest fraction, lowest term right here. So if you're asking to be set, if they were sitting seated randomly, he has a one in six chance of sitting between Rowan and Karina. Okay? So last question. Last question. Remember, write this down. Write it down. Last question. What is the probability of the complementary event? Rishi will not sit between Rowan and Karina. Well, again, there are 24 events, okay? And there were four probable, sorry, four favorable. So that means there's 20 complementary events, which will mean there's a five in six chance. One in six that it's favorable, which leads to five of six chance being complementary, all right? So again, write that down. Remember to put your fractions in lowest terms. And this is really not difficult. It's all about analyzing the data. Okay, good people? So 
Let's meet another day. We'll see you in class and enjoy yourself. Bye-bye.